hello 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 hi guys good morning welcome back to new video ki hal chal i hope you guys are doing good in this we going to see a problem course schedule 2 oh sorry 4 now again uh, as it says course schedule 4 so if you have seen any of the previous course schedule videos again any let's say if you would have watched two or any one then you would know obviously these are more of the problem solved based but even if not let's start off it simply says that you are given some num number of courses so it says i have two courses it says i have two courses it says i have three courses as you can see one two and three zero one two uh numbered but uh, three courses you have okay and they have these labels from zero to n minus one uh number of courses minus one and they are is called like there's an array called as prerequisite where prerequisite is ai comma bi which says that i have to firstly take course ai and then course bi right there is an order involved here there is an order involved here and as soon as we figure out okay there's an order involved in taking any nodes then obviously we have to think of topological sort again i'll attach the video of topological sort also in the description and if you don't know a topological sort it's a very important algorithm it simply says that i can represent any graph as an order how things should be traversed or how things should be represented in a order form okay Let's continue. Uh, now, they are just given that, uh, for example, pair 0, 1, here 0 is a prerequisite before taking course 1. Now, prerequisite can also be indirect, which means that our course A is a prerequisite of course B, B is of C, then A is of C. So, if A is a prerequisite of B, B is of C, then I can also say that A is of C, because ultimately A is also needed to complete course C. Ultimately, you are given some queries, where query is, you have to find, is uj prerequisite of vj or not that is a question which you have to answer so you have to return the boolean array answer where for each query you have to say is it a prerequisite or not obviously let's try to solve it so again let's say if this is the corresponding graph uh again technically we will try to make its co its corresponding topological sort or maybe using that but right now we can easily figure out that yeah one is a prerequisite of zero and one is a prerequisite of zero so that is true but zero is not okay it's false same way um, if i have no prerequisite so there is no prerequisite required so this is also false this is also false 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 uh, same way i have three nodes uh, one is prerequisite of two one is prerequisite of two one is of zero one is of zero two is of zero two is of zero so this is the corresponding graph which we have made now ultimately they ask is one of zero is one of zero yes it is so answer is true is one of two is one of two yes it is answer is true now these all examples were very direct as when i say direct i mean that is already like the quid like the input which is given it is also represented like one is a prerequisite of two and the query is also asking the same so it seems very simple yes it is but the main challenge comes up when you have something of this sort now the question is is one prerequisite of three or not and same way what if the graph becomes much more bigger so the main challenge becomes when the graph is bigger okay let's try to solve with a bigger possible graph now obviously we saw that we are more concerned about the ordering of nodes so the first intuition itself was of topological sort although I mentioned that there are multiple ways to solve this problem again with the help of Floyd Warshall also with the help of simple DFS also but the most intuitive both in terms of you know uh, the understanding as well as to come up okay what to apply is to close sort itself that's the reason I'll only discuss that part so what to close sort says it simply says that uh, you have a node and I start traversing from that node and you always start tra uh, traversing from the nodes with the in degree of zero. So, okay, I'll traverse from here. Again, right now I'm only showing you what a topological sort does. These have an in degree of zero. Like it, it also has an in degree of zero. In degree of node one, zero. In degree of node zero, as zero. In degree of node two, as zero. So, in the very beginning, what do you do? You put all these nodes with the in degree of zero into Q. Although in, topolo in topological sort also, you have two ways, BFS and DFS. BFS is the most intuitive way. That is the reason we always go about BFS. And what to do after that? After that, you remove this. When you remove this, you, earlier its in degree was one. When the node zero was there, its in degree was one because I have one in degree. When I remove it, okay, its in degree becomes zero. And then this is a new candidate which can go inside the Q. 
So earlier imagine zero have you have zero one two you removed zero then you went on and pushed three then you removed one in degree of four earlier it was two because I had two parents but now one went away so in degree became one but can I push four now no I cannot because it's in degree is not zero things which can be pushed in the queue can only be the one whose in degree are zero okay then I will then okay uh, one is removed then I will try to remove two yeah, when I remove two in degree becomes zero yes so I can push that in my queue okay now I have three again right now in degree of five is two when three is removed uh, you will see uh, five I cannot push it yet but it but it in but its in degree will be reduced same way uh, when four will be removed its in degree will become zero so earlier three went away now five went away but sorry as four went away then five only came up. But this is what I showed you. This is corresponding its topological sort or you know topological ordering, which is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. It doesn't say anything. It doesn't say anything about the actual prerequisite. What I mean by that is it doesn't say that the node 1 is a prerequisite of node 3. Node 1, although node 1 is before node 3, but still it doesn't say that node 1 is a prerequisite of node 3. So that is not what this ordering will actually help you. So what, what will help me then? The thing which can help you is that at every point you have to maintain or you have to again, either you have to task, you have your queries, right? You have your multiple queries. So one way is that at every point, go and check if you can answer a specific query or not. That is one way. Other way, what can be possible is uh, you store that what will prerequisite are there for each and every node. So if I tell you what the first way was, first way is that I will simply try that, okay, for let's say I am standing at this specific node. I will simply go and query, oh, can I answer any of the specific query or not? For node 3, I will traverse the entire tree. Again, then I go on to another node, let's say four, then I traverse the entire tree again. So you see that traverse the entire tree again and again. That's one way. But obviously what will happen is you have this graph. Obviously you are doing a simple BFS traversal. BFS traversal takes O of V plus A time, which is O of N because you have N nodes in this. But E, what is E? E is the number of edges. If you look back very closely, number of edges, which is the prerequisite length, because your prerequisite length will itself make the number of edges. That is O of N square in worst case. So I will have O of N square as the number of edges. So it is O of N square in BFS, BFS itself. Will it work? Obviously it will because N is 100. So 1E4 will work. But if for each and every query, I am doing the entire BFS again. So what will happen for each and every query for one query doing the BFS again. So for every query doing the BFS, which means for, for Q queries, we do the BFS, which is O of N square into Q. Again, N square will give you 1 E4 because 100 into 100, 1 E4 and Q, Q itself, if we go away, then it is 1 E4 again. This is 1 E8. This is, this is near edge near edge to getting you TLE. Again, it might or may not pass based on the time constraints. 1E7 is, you know, usually good. Anything which touches 1E8, you know, is tend to be, it can give you TLE. So what can you do? Again, in these cases, what was happening is that you were computing for every query and doing the BFS again. Okay, don't do that. Do the pre-computation. What does pre-computation says? Pre-computation simply says that, okay, let me raise this. Pre-computation says that uh, we will maintain that, okay, node prerequisite, right? I will represent it by NP, which is node prerequisite for a specific node, let's say zero, right? So it will be for a specific node I. So for NP of this node zero is nothing. Again, it is nothing. Same way, node prerequisite of node one is also nothing. Same way, node prerequisite of node 2 is also nothing. Why I maintain this is because as I was traversing and removing, again, I will not repeat that Q thing. Uh, I will not repeat that this thing, right, which is a simple way of BFS traversal. But I will show you that when I removed this node, when I removed, you know, when I removed this node, obviously I said, okay, this node 3 is now the candidate. But even if it's, it's a candidate or not, I will simply do 
in the node in the node prerequisite you know uh, of node 3 i will simply try to push the specific name like my my neighbor itself which is my parent i'll push zero and along with it i'll also push his all prerequisites i'll push his all prerequisites okay i push node zero and i pushed node zero's prerequisite also on to me so now for node three the prerequisite became as only node zero cool same way when uh, i traversed again this is gone right sorry yeah let's let's keep it but this is gone so i can just simply cross it this is gone same way when i traversed node one i go on to i reduce node force in degree that is true then i did one thing i said node prerequisite of node four will be obviously one and also his pre his pre prerequisite right okay which will say okay it is only one because his pre his pre uh, prerequisite is empty then obviously he's gone then when he's gone okay node 2 is the next one because his in degree is zero which which means okay just simply put node 2 and his prerequisite and his prerequisite okay now ultimately i have got that for node 4 the prerequisite needs to be 1 and 2 how will i solve the query for me let's say if the query would have been 4 comma 0 so i will check sorry it should be 0 comma 4 i will check for node 4 is 0 pre prerequisite or not which means for node 4 which i am already storing in a form of an array this should be a what data structure such that you can search any number as fast as possible obviously it should be a hash set or an unordered set i should say so i will maintain for node prerequisite for every you know element it will be nothing but a unordered map or a hash set this will help me to search is node zero here oh it is not which means that zero is not the prerequisite for node four while if the query would have been 2 comma 4 obviously for node 4 i will go on and check if i have to yes i have to that is the reason 2 is a prerequisite of node 4 okay let's continue further and then we'll discuss the discuss the time complexity then we traverse on node 3 so for node prerequisite of 5 i will simply say okay 3 will come up then the prerequisite of 3 will also come up okay then when 4 go away firstly 4 will come up then prerequisite of 4 will also come up, which is 1, 2. And thus, the prerequisite of 5 becomes, no prerequisite of 5 becomes 3, 0, 4, 1, and 2. And let's say if I have an another query, let's say, uh, you know, 0, 5. Obviously, I'll go to the node 5, check if I have 0 in that specific set. Yes, if I have it, simply return a true. Now, what is the time complexity? Obviously, if I would have traversed a simple graph, it would have been, as I mentioned, O of n square, which is a simple BFS time. But now, at every step, I go on to, obviously, firstly, at every step, I push up my parent's value, which means here, let's say, for, for, like, for example, this. At every step, let's say at node 5, I put up my parent value, which is okay, which is still okay, because my parent in total can be n. Again, in total can be n, but for my parents, whatever values they had, whatever values they had, I iterated on them as well. So ultimately, for every node, in worst case, I might be putting up n elements into it. So this BFS traversal would have taken n square time, but for each and every node, there's an extra operation which I am doing, which is going on to my entire parent's node prerequisite list and putting them into myself, which in worst case can be n nodes. Thus, O of n cube, O of n cube will be the time required to build the entire array with prerequisite. Again, will this work? Obviously, yes, because n cube will be 1 e 6 because 100 into 100 into 100, which is 1 e 6. Okay. Now, if I go on and go on to any query, let's say this query I go on to, I just have to go and check the node 4, node 4, and simply do a hash set, which is an O of 1 operation for each and every query. So for each query, I will be able to figure out answer in just one time. So for Q queries, answer in Q time. 
Thus, my time complexity will be O of n cube plus q. And this is your final complexity because it is 1e6 plus 1e4, which is nothing but 1e6. 1e6. Ultimately capped up by O of n cube. So this is your final time complexity again, although this is this, but 1e6 is higher. Now, there are multiple ways to solve it. You can solve it via using floyd Warshall also. You can solve it via simple using DFS also. But this is the most intuitive both in terms of understanding and also, as I mentioned, that uh, complexity also wise, this is pretty much good for us and also the most optimal. Cool. Let's see the code. It's exactly very same as what we saw in dry run also. That firstly, we build the graph with the help of prerequisite array. So I go on to all the edges in the prerequisite. So if the prerequisite says u comma v, I will build an edge from u to v. From u to v, I build an edge. Then because for node v, the in degree has increased by one. So for node v, in degree has increased by one. Okay, then to start off your simple uh, topology sort, you have to get all the nodes with the in degree of zero and push that in the queue. I'll do the same thing. Then here I have made a node prerequisite array. For all the n nodes, it will have an unordered set or you know a hash set. Until my queue becomes empty, I will grab out the node. I will go on to all of its neighbors, or I should say, my or all of its corresponding children. For example, if I have a node 4, then if it has three children, let's say 5, 6, and 7, then first step, as I mentioned, that for node 5, put 4 in his prerequisite put four in his prerequisite, put four in his prerequisite, and also whatever prerequisite of four would be there, just simply put them as well. So firstly, I put the node itself in my neighbor's prerequisite, and then I iterated on all the prerequisite of my node, put them also inside my neighbor. Ultimately, this will help us to update my neighbor's prerequisite. And again, it's a hash set. So if there are some duplicates, it will be reduced automatically. Uh, and I will make sure that as the node is going away, so adjacency, you know, in degree of the adjacent node, which is the neighbor node is also reduced. If it is, if it becomes zero, then push it in the queue. It is a simple topo step, topological sort, topological sort step. Ultimately, I have built my, you know, pre-computation I've done already. Just go on to all the queries, check that. Again, the query will look like u comma v. You have to figure out that for node v is u the prerequisite or not. So simply check that for the node v is u the prerequisite or not. If yes, then simply return like put it true. If not, put it false. Again, this will help us to say if the node u is actually a prerequisite of node v or not. Thus, as you can simply see, time will be O of n cube because of your this step, this step. Again, uh, if I just have to deep down, this step will take O of n square. Let's change the color. Yeah, this step will take O of n time. The entire step will take O of n square time because I have n square number of edges. Thus, the Q will take O of n square plus n, which is O of v plus e time. So this entirely will, will take O of n cube time and this will take O of Q time. Thus, the complexity will be O of n cube plus Q and space, as you know, that uh, you are simply building the adjacency list, you are simply building all this stuff. So it will be O of n square. Again, simply building of the corresponding graph. Cool, I hope you guys got it. Again, it is not that hard, but you should understand that these are very standard problems. So intuition wise, you should be able to very able, like very fastly able to click to post here. Bye-bye, take care.